walk their own path at VES. And I have to say that my favorite part of being an advisor is hyping up my advisees <laughs> and cheering them on in all that they do. So in that spirit, I'm going to list some of the qualities. These are just some of the qualities that make Georgia extraordinary and in no particular order. Number one, as previously mentioned, a wisdom far beyond her years. Number two, a deep sense of caring for others and a heart to hear their stories. Number three, the ability to speak her truth into the world along with her desire to change it. Number four, her passion for justice and the boldness to lead others in these efforts. Number five, an artistic talent that brings together all of these gifts and talents. Plus, she's pretty funny. Thank you. <laughs> Georgia, your words and actions have encouraged our community to grow, and for that, I would like to thank you. Thank you. I believe in you. This school believes in you. And we are all really excited to see where you will go. Thank you. That was so sweet. So this is really strange standing here right now because I really don't feel like there's anything I could say that you guys don't already know, especially for those of you who are older than me. So take what I'm about to say as more of a reminder than like some new revelation or something. Um, so I remember being little and having this obsession with being called like a big girl or always wanting to be so badly, always wanting so badly to be grown. Um, when my aunties would come over, I would run to my mom's room, go through her things, put on her clothes and her heels and like spray perfume all over myself and do my makeup in the same way she would. Um, and then I'd walk over to where they're sitting and I would just sit by one of them and like cross my legs and mirror their body language. Um, sometimes I would even like interrupt their conversation to share like some of my own gossip just to feel like I was big like them because in my mind being their age or even just like hitting the big years of 16, 18 or 21 meant having arrived at a point in my life where I'd be like some kind of wonder woman and that to me meant like being independent, rich, like all knowing and like my only issue or struggle in life would be like having like seven guys like madly in love with me and fighting over me. Um, that's what I thought. Um, and I actually just turned 18 last week and let's just say that little me would probably be like a little underwhelmed with life right now. <laughs> um, I'm at a boarding school right now. I'm, a board, I'm in a boarding school in a foreign country so I guess that makes me independent effectively. So I do have that, but I'm not rich and I'm nowhere near all knowing. And as far as I know, I don't have seven guys <laughs> madly in love with me fighting over me right now. So, and as an 18 year old senior girl in high school, I can, honest, I can honestly say that I've never been more confused in my life. And as I've grown, I've become less blind to the realities of life, how unkind, unclear, unfair, and even defeating it can be sometimes. Um, and no one really tells you this part until it hits at whatever age or point in your life, um, but it can really be a lot. And this is not to say that life isn't good too or beautiful or enjoyable and happy because it is, but life is happy but also really confusing at the same time. And I think in our minds we think that everything's either black or white, right or wrong, or happy or sad, but really I think you can live in both extremes at the same time in a kind of gray area and it's normal. Um, it doesn't mean you're lost or failing, it just means that you're figuring stuff out, which is literally what everyone else is doing too. And also nothing is really that final, except, I don't know, like maybe death, but even <laughs> depending on your like belief system and worldview, then that could also be arguable that that's not true. Um, so that's up for you to decide. Um, but when you do find yourself living in this gray area and dealing with confusion, just like I pretty much always am, not really knowing who you are, what and who you're becoming, which we all have or will experience and even maybe perpetually exist in, um, the things you love will still be there. For me, painting will still be there, God will still be there, music will still be there, painting a fresh coat of nail polish on my nails every week will still be there, hanging out in the lounge on Jet with uh, the Jet girls. <laughs> will still be there. Um, doing my makeup at midnight for fun will still be there. My free period will still be there. Um, 
the inside jokes with my family will still be there. Going home for the summer will still be there. There will always be something good that remains. So really my point is that if you feel like you have no idea what's going on or what you're doing, you probably don't because nobody really does, as far as I know. Um, and if you're waiting for this peak or ideal fantasy version of your life that you create in your mind, um, I don't think it exists, but l life is a duality of good or bad, of good and bad. And these things can coexist at the same time. And I think the smartest thing is to take the present for all the things that it is, while keeping, while keeping in mind that most of it will change and hopefully positively. Um, I hope that's relieving to you because it is for me. It means that all I really have to do is just live and see what happens. So yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.